Uh, boom, 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 boom. I want to make sure that I'm muting this shit. We're live, dude. We are, are we? officially, officially live. Okay. How's, uh, how's everybody? I hope everybody's doing uh, well Hello. today. And um, we are starting this episode. What is the episode? It's, I think it's 52. Yeah, it's, dude, it's 52. 52, 52 episodes. Damn. Uh, we have my good friend Steve Jung here. Steve, how are you, man? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? How are you doing, Mache? Thanks for having me here. It's an yeah, honor to be here. I'm doing great, dude. I'm um, happy to actually have you because, you know, it's exciting to see where you are right now with your career and, and whatnot. And we'll definitely talk a little bit a little bit about that, uh -huh. obviously, obviously within the realm of, you know, sensitive information and whatnot. Um, right. But, uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to have you here and uh, uh -huh. for those who and, I mean, you know I'll, I'll just start as usually we start so for those who yeah. don't know who Steve Jung is uh, who is the infamous or am I the infamous <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the almighty almighty Steve Jung who are you like, dude <laughs> who am I uh, my name is Steve Jung so I got to pretend like people are listening to me, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretend. I only see you. <laughs> um, I am Steve Jung. I am currently, I'm a art director for uh, Universal Pictures. I've been with Universal for the past two and a half years. Uh, Universal is creating this uh, massive uh, monster universe, and I've been helping them uh you know, with their art direction and the, and the look of, they got about five to six movies planned out. And the first one was The Mummy with uh, Tom Cruise and uh, Russell Crowe. So uh, I've been involved with that uh, for a while. And then right now we're in this uh, blue sky period, you know, just exploring uh, a lot of the look for it. Um, and about myself, um, I went to our center, uh, graduated in 2003. Um, I, well, before that, I, I, I started art pretty late. I started when I was 21. Mm -hmm. um, I always wanted to draw and stuff, but I, I started pretty late. I, I never, you know, had pro uh, formal training until I was like 2019. And then I went to Art Center when I was 21, and then I went to Art Center for about two years, but I graduated um, in 2003. And then uh, right when I got out from uh, Art Center, I started working for this company called um, Semi Studios, uh, which happened to be uh, the mother company for Sega. They had just bought out of Sega. And, um, that was my first job out of college, uh, making video games, and uh, it was a game called uh, The Dark Watch. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went on to uh, feature animation. I started working for this company called uh, Imaji. Um, they they were based in Hong Kong, but they became pretty big here. And I, I worked on this uh, feature animation. Uh, called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And uh, there I met uh, my good friend Ben Proctor, who sort of uh, introduced me to uh, live action. Uh, when I was at Imaji, uh, we worked together on these turtles. And then he left. And then he, at the time, he was just like straight out of VFX. Mm -hmm. And then he became like this guy at, at um, Avatar, and, and, and he did like Transformers, and he became an art director, and he called me up saying like, hey, you want to work on this movie called Avatar? And I was like, no, what is that? What the hell is Avatar? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I thought he was talking about the anime Avatar. All right. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't want to <laughs> I don't, I don't work on that. So I passed out on that, and then he called me a few months later, and he was like, oh, you want to work on this other movie 
called Transformers. And I was like, yeah, of course, I, I know Transformers. You know, I want to go work on that. So uh, that's how I started doing live action. So from Transformers, I, I worked on uh, Tron Legacy, uh, Thor. Um, I worked on Battleship, the Avengers, uh, Superman, Wolverine. I worked on two of the Ninja Turtles. I worked on three uh, Transformers, uh, Fantastic Four, uh, Parts of the Caribbean. Um, let's see, uh, I worked on the. This year alone, uh, it's funny that I have like four or five movies coming out that I worked on. Like every movie that I worked for the past three, four years, it's just coming out all in this year for some reason. <laughs> so <laughs> I got like Pirates, Mummy, um, and then King Kong. I did a little you bit of King work. Kong? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I helped on that movie a little bit too. Yeah, yeah I saw your work. I, 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 I worked there for like two months only. Uh, and then... What what else did I work? I can't even remember. Um, but I did a little bit of work on Blade Runner, the new one coming out. I just did the pitch for that movie. That's cool. Yeah. So and then in between, uh, I, I I I opened up. Uh, I I started this school called uh, Red Engine Studios. Uh, I don't know if people remember that anymore, but it was a few years ago. So I, I ran that for about six years with a partner, uh, John Park. And I also taught at our center uh, for a few years. Uh, but now I, I stopped teaching um, and I don't, I don't, we closed shop on uh, Red Engine as well. I think that's how we met, right? You, yeah, you that's, that's how we met, actually. Yeah, for, it was for Red Engine, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good to see like a lot of the teachers that we had, like John Park, you know, Anthony Jones. Uh, everyone's like got their own thing going. Yeah, and it's like really good to see that. Um, yeah, so that's that's about it. That's, I think that's me. Yeah, that's how we met. I mean, uh, I did a class for you. Um, gosh, what like was a, it? I think it was like a, either like an environment painting or it was like a. Uh, advanced con i think it was advanced concept art yeah yeah <laughs> that's a funny thing because yeah. uh it was a lot of, i think it was like sold out in first few days yeah yeah it was and then like good. the first sure. the first lesson everyone was there yeah then, I, I don't know whether i was too harsh to people or what what the fuck happened no, think, <laughs> towards yeah, the think, end it was like yeah. five people <laughs> right, right. Um, I, I, it would tend to do that, yeah. Yeah, right. uh, for anyone, yeah. there, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, some of my old students from from Red Engine, you know, will be listening to this at some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like they they can they can testify. I was like the first thing, the first thing I said, like I would fucking fire you all guys for the homework. You uh, did. Like if, if, <laughs> if you were my, my uh, if you were working for me, I would yeah, fire I would you guys. Fire your ass, like right now <laughs> you're like uh, was so good uh i was speaking the truth though i was trying to be honest you know so uh it is what it is i mean I, I used to be very harsh when i first started teaching but then i sort of like stopped that persona <laughs> <laughs> I, I i had that going for a while and then after a while i realized that you know you you want them to sort of like uh encourage them more you know right, so yeah um, I, I, I was like this because i learned it like this hardcore way because I, I when i was at our center it was still like those teachers that were really hard on you and i learned it like that yeah so i was doing the same thing to the students but then after a while you realize like it's not that time anymore you know and, and, and yeah <laughs> At Art Center, yeah. they don't fuck around, aren't they? No, I think now they, they, it's a lot easy going, you know, and, mm. and, you know, my style of teaching changed throughout the years. Like, after I taught for a few years, like, I, I became more of an encouraging teacher. Right. Um, but I, I didn't mess around, though, but I was, I was trying to encourage people more. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's uh, you're right though. Like it can discourage people from from participating, and it's like, oh, you're harsh, and and I I know it can have a negative effect on teaching. Like usually when you have like a positive reinforcement towards a student, it works a little better, you know, because like not everyone has the grit. Or not everyone yeah. is born with that, yeah. and maybe that's something that they need to learn uh, as they go. Right. Um, but what I, what I learned from the grid, since you're talking about like students with that have that grid to push themselves, is that you don't have to do anything for them. You know, they push themselves. Yeah. So what you got to like focus on is like the student with the least motivation. If you push that guy in the class. And everyone just moves along. If you push the least strong-willed guy, that's what I learned. You know, so mm. I used to just take the guys that are good, and then I like, try to make them better. But you know, those guys will get better no matter what. You know, but yeah, if you push the guy that's the least who who's like working hard, and you push that guy, I think he just pushes everyone in front of him, and everyone just gets better. Yeah, it's almost like those students who are, you know, having that grit and they already sort of, they have the motivation towards, yeah, shit, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this no matter what. Uh, all they really need is sort of like a nudge towards, this, you know, the right direction and they'll pick up pick up the ball and, and run with it. Um, and, I, you know, it, it's, it's kind of funny because I think uh, when we were, when I was starting to teach for Red Engine, uh, I, 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 whether it was you or someone else I was talking about, it might, might have been you, where it's just like there's there's this, you know, there's always like only a few percent of students that really make it. Like even if you look at Art Center, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, students that finish Art Center, not all of them gonna end up working, you know. Right. Uh, it's usually like what ten percent of them that are really gonna propel and and become you know like really good artists. And then, you know, uh, you're going to have some percentage of, like, people that are being completely average. Mm -hmm. And and then, like, the spectrum of, you know, oh, I, I thought it's going to be 9 to 5 when I finish Art Center right. or, or right. School A or B. That means right. I already have a job, you know? Right. Right. It's never like that. It's, it's, not, it's not. And you just have to push those guys that don't believe in that. Yeah. I mean... You'll have the ten percent of the guys that it's just like they have so much motivation that they just like exceed expectation and, and they just become really good. Yeah. But those guys would have been successful no matter where they were, they yeah. where, where they went. You know, it didn't have to be our center; it could be anywhere else. And you have like the rest, like the fifty percent who are working hard, but you know, just needs that you know extra motivation. Yeah. You know, that you could give to them. And then there's, like, the other, you know, 40% that just don't want to try. Mm, yeah. yeah. But I think those are my target, usually. Like, I try to motivate them. And when they get motivated, they'll try to push the other guys, you know. it's Because it's not usually the teacher. It's a lot of times your, your fellow students that make you better. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because the teacher is just like a, a guidance. You just point to, you know, where to go. But you can't, you can't, you know, walk, walk the path for them. You know? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something, something interesting is that the first time, the first, my first uh, teaching experience was CDA uh -huh. with, uh, with Kevin Chen. I you did a workshop, right? Yeah, I did is a that... workshop over there. Yeah. And yeah. I was scared shitless, dude. I, I was like, holy shit. I've never uh, done any public thing where I'm talking to people or right. anything like that. And um, I was just like shitting my ass basically with, with you know, with fear. Fear. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then I, after... I still have, I still have that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, even, I guess it's best. I get so stressed when I teach. <laughs> even, even, it's, it's, here's, here's a funny thing. Like, even, I know you for, like, really long time. I mean, it's been a couple of years now. Uh, okay. We've worked on a couple of projects together in the studio. And we know each other really well. And even, even now, like, jumping on this call with you and having, 
this podcast happening, I have like a little bit of anxiety, you know? Uh, and I think uh, it's it, pretty normal. Um, it's, I think it's totally normal. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like stage fright, you know? Yeah. I, I, that's, that's like one of the things that I felt when I was teaching, especially like you want to go in every, every week and teach and teach them something new. Um, and you want to be all in and in you, I, I get nervous every, every, you know, beginning of the class every week, I, I would, I would, get nervous mm. you know it was stressful too <laughs> so <laughs> yeah after doing it for like seven years you know and you, and you had to take a break from it yeah yeah so you guys uh, you guys closed closed shop right we closed shop uh well it's more because like you know uh we both wanted to do other things yeah you know uh, we started out in downtown uh we didn't really start out at first to be a school um, we, we wanted, we wanted to teach, but the whole point of Red Engine at, at when we first started was to teach together, you know, with people that we like, all the artists and mm -hmm. friends and, you know, and then, but we always also wanted to do gallery shows. So, right. which we, you know, we had like one or two gallery shows. We also wanted to work together. So we did some projects, we did some commercials and, and animation projects together. So the teachers, you know, would come teach for us and work with us, you know, and do gallery shows with us and hang out and sketch, you know, because we had a wine bar down. Words, we would go drink wine and sketch. Mm -hmm. So I, it was more to like have this community of artists, you know, concept artists, hang, right. hang out together, work together. That was like the whole thing, but it ended up being more of a school later on. Later on. But, you know, at the end, like, you know, John wanted to do his own thing, uh, which is like concentrate on games, and I wanted to, you know, concentrate on my career more later on for, yeah. you know, for for to find, you know, to concentrate on the career and for for the, um, that aspect of, of work because it was just too much work. Like, yeah, it can we're running it. that school. I was teaching at you know at our center, working you know full time and doing freelance. So it's just like you know, no time for family or anything else. Um, yeah, it can be it can be really exhausting after a while. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's very exhausting. I, I totally agree. It's like it is. No matter uh, no matter what, it, it is like you know, it's a full time job. Even if you're um, if you're just let's say, um, you know, you started a school and you you're only there like once a week or twice a week, right? It almost seems like oh, it's, you're only working a couple of hours here and there. Oh, with the uh, school? Yeah, yeah. But but what 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 people don't realize is all the behind the scenes. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that yeah, just eat out time. Class. So when I first started this uh, Red Engine, I was teaching four classes, so that was a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, you because know, we weren't just teaching concept art. We we're teaching you know oil painting, figure drawing, you know landscape painting, like everything. It's like a like a real art school. Yeah. yeah, so but he eventually went to like concept, right? Yeah, we ended up concentrating on concept, and we also concentrated on like helping guys get like like we taught like high school kids mm -hmm. to to help with their portfolio. Uh, we we had like you know professionals. We also had like high school kids that wanted to go to like you know art schools, or we have professionals that wanted to get a better job. You know, right. same thing. Yeah. You know? portfolio help yeah it's kind of it's kind of kind of weird uh it, it seems like the the market uh, if you can call it a market but generally um let's let's put it this way the audience like that we have right now the people that are listening majority of them they kind of they kind of are in the industry they know you know art station and they know who you are and who i am and you know what we, we're doing here and all that stuff but there's just uh i remember talking with uh nick jindra and an Aton. i think you've mentioned this a couple of times too maybe uh correct me if i'm wrong but uh there is like a lot of students that go to like your regular art school you know or mm -hmm. like art university where it's like teachers that have no fucking clue what they are talking about oh yeah and, and um 
And those kids just like end up, you know, wasting a lot of money for for bullshit, basically, you know. And it's right. it's right. kind of like interesting. I it, I wonder if you uh, when you were uh, when you guys were doing Red Engine, if if that was something like you were thinking about, like how can we reach out to those kids too? Mm -hmm. Like who didn't have the right teachers at school and were learning the right stuff. Yeah. Well, like, you know, I think like, you know, you got to respect those teachers that teach for many, many, many years, you know, because it's something very hard to do it for that long. Yeah, and of not course. Getting But at the same time, they, they lose their passion for teaching, you know, and, and you know, they're not maybe up to date on, on what's going on uh, in the industry. Yeah. So it might be irrelevant to, to you know, what, what you actually need to know at the moment. Uh, but I think it depends on what kind of art uh, education it is. You know, if you're trying to be like a traditional artist, I think it's good to learn all that, you know, history and art history and all that stuff. But if your goal is to go out and get a job, you know, you might, you might not be learning the right stuff. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's what, I, that's what I'm referring like, to mostly. I do believe in like a need to learn like all that stuff though, like yeah. a lot of uh, foundational stuff and knowing the art history and all that stuff is good, you know. Yeah, helpful. yeah, for sure. Uh, what do you think about? Uh, I, I know we wanted to talk about this primarily, uh, you know, because um, uh, like you could call yourself and I could call myself an artist, but in, in essence, we are we are not really. I mean, we are and we are and we are really... We're image makers. Yeah, image makers, like production people, right? Right, right. And, and like, I think people get, a lot of students get confused, you know, uh, about this job. People that want to get into uh, concept art mm -hmm. get confused about being artistic and having that I think people struggle with that mindset. You know, I, I went through the same thing where, you know, um, my necessity to be an artist is conflicting with my, you know, job because in the job, it requires a different, you know, set of uh, thinking because you, you are a commercial artist mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 you know, we're more of an image maker than, than an artist. You know, and, and and going through art school and learning how to do art, you, your mentality becomes very, you know, artistic. Mm -hmm. and, and you start going to job. And the whole purpose of being a commercial artist is to make money for that project. You yeah. know, and it's sometimes conflicting because you are asked to do or forced to do things different ways, like using references photo collaging you know photo bashing and sometimes you you know you think like is this the right thing to do you know which i say like it is you know because <laughs> the whole point is to get the job done at the end of the day and you got to leave your artistic thinking behind you and, and use that on your own time you know use that yeah. passion on your own time because you know you're there to to Get a job. It's a job. At the end of the day, you know, your you, concept artist is a job title. You know. Yeah. So, so if someone's paying for you, you know, for that, so you gotta act like an employee. You know, and and as a professional, you know, and and your job is to make a good image. Um, you know, for for the need of the greater good. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. and a lot of times, you know, people confuse that and and and. They they apply too much of that artistic or or artsy thinking into it. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, I remember, and you've been in the industry. You've been around for a long time. You remember conceptart.org? I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I got I got in there like pretty late. Uh, let me see. Uh, I've been around for like almost 15 years now. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, yeah, 15 years. Uh, I, I didn't start 
you know, going into concept art until like 2006. Like I, okay. I didn't, I, I didn't really explore much. I didn't, I didn't post much there. But I knew like I knew Craig Mullins. I knew, I knew my my hero was like Ryan Church. You know, yeah, um, Ryan. Ryan's great. I, yeah, like fortunately, I had him as a teacher uh, when I was in school, and and that's my exposure to um, digital painting. Uh, you know, using using Painter. I actually didn't paint with Photoshop until I started working. So, oh, I um, see. yeah, before then, uh, I was I had like one term, one semester of uh, digital painting, and and actually I didn't turn full uh, digital until uh, Transformers. Before then, I was still doing pencil drawings and and marker oh, okay. drawings okay. and a lot of pen sketching, you know, <laughs> things like that. So you were in the just, animation studio uh, in the beginning. You were yeah. mostly working in pencils and stuff. I was doing yeah pencil drawings of sets. Damn. Like Pretty old I, 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 drew, I drew the Ninja Turtles layers with uh, pencil, like <laughs> mechanical <laughs> pencil and yeah, erasers, and I, I did little thumbnails on, on, on with sharpies and things like that. You know, and and because like I didn't I didn't. When I was in school, there was no entertainment design at our center. Mm -hmm. um, so I went in as an illustrator. So I learned how to do, you know, oil paintings and, and you know, acrylic paintings and mixed media and you know, charcoal, charcoal drawings. And then, you know, we were there and we had to set up our own curriculum. So, you know, I like the first half I was doing like uh, traditional painting. And then the rest of uh, schooling, I was I spent most of my time in, in uh, transportation design room. So I was drawing, you know, cars and industrial design stuff. Right. Like one of my good friends um, was a was a um, transportation design major. So I spent a lot of time there, you know, drawing cars, which is basically what what concept art is. You know, it's a combination of industrial design and, and illustration, and and and, you know, all this digital media is just a tool, you know, to, to help you get there. You know? Yeah. Um, dude, I almost lost my train of thought here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, what are you making? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing this sort of, I don't know, I, I, I like what Vitaly is doing, so I wanted to try something like Vitaly-esque. What is that program that you? Uh, it's like a little uh, mask, uh, mask kind of thing here, going on mm -hmm. around his skull. So, uh, and then I can mirror it and whatnot. So, so what is the? Uh, what's up? What is the program that you're using? Oh, it's uh, this is called Fusion 360. It's um, it's like SolidWorks and Inventor, you know, like CAD software. Uh, mm -hmm. where you, it's um. Crap, I forgot. Like parametric modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like you you know you know uh, Paul Osimo, right? Uh, yeah. He works in Rhino. So it's yeah, like, yeah. It's it's like a, a step further mm -hmm. uh, from from Rhino. It's like more towards surfaces mm -hmm. uh, versus like poly modeling and stuff like that. So it's used by engineers. So like the stuff I, I'm doing here, I could basically send it to milling, and they would mm -hmm. they would you know, process it and print it out and whatnot. I think it even have like a, yeah, you can actually print it from the program itself. So I, I, have, I have zero uh, knowledge of 3D. <laughs> you're, you're like one of the, one of the people that, um, I think I'm the only one out of the illustrators in the union that doesn't know how to use 3D. Yeah. You're like the only, yeah. You're one of the only, the only ones I know. But you're a badass, okay. though. I'm actually gonna pull up your work. Damn, I should probably pull. I, up I your used, work. You know what's funny though? Like when I first started doing this stuff, like I learned Maya when I back in '99. Yeah. And then I needed to know Maya to be a concept artist. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that's when I met. Um, my friend Cecil Kim, he had just worked on, on uh, Final Fantasy IX, 
and he came in uh, to show us uh, his work from it. And I was like, what? You don't have to do 3D? He's like, no, you can just uh, do this in Photoshop. And I was like, you did that on Photoshop? <laughs> so like, I, I dropped my 3D tools, and I started learning in Photoshop. Mm. But he forgot to tell me that there was this thing called Wacom uh, pen. So I was drawing uh, with my mouse. For, my mouse? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> I know. How did he do it? Like, it's so hard. Like, how, how the hell did he do it? Yeah. So. Well, Craig Mullins did paint with mouse for like the longest did time. He? Apparently. He, yeah. That guy's like, you know, a badass. Yeah. He's a legend. Yeah. It, 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 even long yeah. after they had like Wacoms and, and whatnot, he would still stick to the mouse. Because I, I, I remember, I think he was having uh, an interview with Level Up Guys or someone else, or maybe Bobby Chu when he was talking about it, uh, like he didn't want to switch. I, I might be paraphrasing. Go go look it up. I might be I might be completely wrong here. But I remember, as, as far as my memory is not failing me, is he said like, yeah, even though Wacom was out there, he was like still not convinced. Um, but yeah, so, so you wanted to go to 3D before you went to like... Uh, I didn't know like the difference between... Like I just wanted like... Like, I wanted to get into video games. Like, right. that was my passion. Yeah. Like, my goal was to go work for Square Soft. Like, I love Final uh, Fantasy. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to work on, like, the next Final Fantasy. And, you know, I did some research. And, you know, there was this thing, you know, that that's, all the games are made, made in 3D. So, you got to learn that. So, I thought, okay, like, it was a 3D program. And... And they told me, oh, there's this thing called Maya. So I started like studying Maya. And then later I found out you didn't have to do that. You know, you could just be an artist and, and be a concept artist and get into games. So I did that. And I went to art center wanting to do that. But then I got sucked into like traditional art. Mm -hmm. So like for a while, I, I, I concentrated on being a gallery artist. So that's when I had my hair grown out. Like I had like really long hair. I dyed it, bleached it white. I was <laughs> in my cargo what? pants. Yeah, like <laughs> I had, I went through this dark phase of being super artsy. <laughs> and I, I used, I, I, I had my like oil painting brushes. Like, you know, I, 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 I wanted to be like, uh, there was this teacher uh, named uh, Mike, Michael Hussar. Uh -huh. And like, I love his oil paintings. And yeah, his, I, I his oils is, were awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to be a gallery artist, and then um, like I forgot that I wanted to. I got into school to be, you know, a concept artist, and I started right. pursuing my passion for, you know, gallery art. And then, like around like six, seven term, James Klein showed up in in his like Porsche. And I was like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot. Like, I want to be a concept <laughs> artist. So I, I went out to him and I started talking to him. I, I like, totally forgot I want to make money. Yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot like, I don't want to starve. It's, it's traditional art. Like, it's fun because <laughs> it's fun. It's really, like, it's like an attractive, uh, you know, uh, media. You yeah. know, oil painting. It's, it's, it's something, it's very sexy, you know, and I, I was totally into it. So I went, I stopped doing that and I started doing, like, uh, industrial design and I started, you know, getting into like digital painting with Ryan Church and and you know that's so I, I I lost track but I went back at it you know at, at the end of my you know art center school year around sixth term yeah you know. um yeah I mean don't get me wrong like you can you can make money with fine arts like that's just really hard it's it's harder like I guess it yeah. just requires different different way of thinking and you know different approach i i don't know enough about that world to right. tell I you i think that's where, where your artistic uh thoughts come in like like right the, it, it's because you're making when you're a gallery artist you're actually making i don't know i feel like you're making art for yourself mm. you know when you're like a commercial artist you're making for someone else you know yeah 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 it's usually the case like you as a as a commercial artist obviously you're making art for someone in most cases 
but um dude i'm looking at that art you have from tor 2009 like i don't have a website did i I tell you about my website what happened to it no you didn't (laughs) so i had a website um I found your blog, I have, by I, the way. I'm just kind of going through your uh, old work. So. so I don't have a website anymore. And, and I, no one asked me to look at my website or my work when I get jobs anymore. So I don't really need it. But right. like, I still have a website. It was stevejung.net. I had it until last year, like until, like I think, uh, October. And I didn't pay uh, my domain. I, I didn't renew my domain. And I forgot it. And I realized after a month that I didn't I didn't pay so my subscription. So I went to pay it, but someone had already taken my domain. So <laughs> Steve Jones' name was taken. So I looked at it. Don't look it up because now it's a Russian porn site. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Don't look it up. It's like you'll get, you'll get hit with Russian porn now. <laughs> it's like, I, don't, I don't know why they bought that. And turn it into this Russian. It might be. Website. It might be because so you're oh. like popular, and maybe like a lot of clicks and whatnot. And uh-huh. then, and then when they see it's popular, they buy it. Like when it expires, they buy it, and uh, and they turn it into some crap. Yeah, I think uh, some, there was someone else who had the same issue. <laughs> yes, now I don't have a website anymore, and I, I probably have to like get a new one. Maybe do like I, I still don't have an art station account. So maybe I'll do like an art station or something. The yeah, art station is fine. It's pretty pretty straightforward. It's easy to use. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I cannot imagine. Yeah, I w- I would go with that. But again, like, do you really need it? Like at that at that point, it's just you know. I think I think after you. you work for a while, there it becomes uh, a time where people don't ask for your portfolio anymore. Right. You know, and, and, and you know they they just hire you for your name at a certain point. And and you know, basically know most of the people that does the hiring, or you become the guy that's actually hiring. So yeah, like you are right now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. You don't have to worry okay. about that then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I'm guessing it's uh, it's still. I mean, it could still be relevant. Uh, I still, you know, I, I try to update it's my site. You have a website then. Yeah, it, it's also like. You, you might be, and I found it to be to be useful. Like I'm getting opportunities from different places, not only from the sources that I'm already sort of familiar right. with. So, like if you're in film, as as you said, like at some point when you work in film, you, you actually told me this uh, when I was joining the union. when I was joining the union. You, you told me like you're gonna work on one or two films. Like two films, and you're probably gonna know enough people to never right, right. look for work anymore. <laughs> that's kind of <Right>. true. <laughs> right. Uh, that's especially when you're like really pushing it, and you really want to be, you know, on top of your game and right. and try right. to do the best right. of your ability. That's right. when they, that's... yeah, they they see yeah. they see that, and uh, and you're set pretty much because like you're gonna work with the. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, it's, it's not just because like. You work on two films. So you're very talented, and, and you know you're also yeah. a very capable person. So I think that has a lot to do with that. You know, like what I because this is actually like what I think about like opportunities. You know, like students ask like a lot. You know, how do you how do you get a job? How do you get in the on the union? Or how do you get hired in, in a studio? And I don't have an answer for that. Like like if you're good, you're gonna notice. Yeah, but it's a lot of it is luck. I, I think like my career involved a lot of luck, um, but you bring that luck when you work really hard. You know, you bring these things like good karma and luck to you, and you yeah. just have to be ready. If you work super hard, you're ready for that to grab that luck. So like, like when 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 opportunity approaches you, like you when you were working at Naughty Dog. You know, and, and you practice, you, you, because I think you came up to me on, on, on the Nasty Black workshop or, or portfolio review we were doing, and you're like, we, we sort of said hi. Yeah. And we started talking yeah. to each other. Yeah, yeah. But, like, like, like you just knew the right person, at, like, because you were already, like, really good, right? Mm-hmm. And, and people wanted to give you opportunities in film. Like, 
there was like coming to you like with film opportunities but you were ready you know you didn't really ask for it it just came to you you know and then you're ready to take it and and, and you know now you're like the big shot in, in films too so yeah it's 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 not really like oh you're lucky that's why it's more like as you're saying it's it's the opportunity is gonna it's gonna be there and it's a matter if you're prepared and be, by me by prepared meaning that the circumstances of some art director or some production designer or director having that moment where it's just like i've worked with those guys but i need something fresh therefore i'm gonna go check pinterest tumblr art station whatever whatever else is there and then they see your work and then okay yeah i want to try that guy you know because like for me that's that's how i got introduced to film in the first place it was like i was found basically and yeah. this is where it started so yeah. i think i think getting found is like you know you didn't ask like because that's like how i got into like well i didn't get found because ben proctor knew me yeah before but he sort of introduced me to this guys in, in film, you know, to the directors and producers. And, like, I didn't ask him to do it, but he just did because, you know, he thought I was good enough to, to you know, try yeah, some, you exactly. know, new stuff. Like but the he, thing was, like, I was ready for that, you know. Like, I was ready. Always, like, I always updated my portfolios. I was working hard. Because I've never actually drawn robots before <laughs> when I went to Transformers. But I was ready to take the challenge, and and the first day of my work, I didn't sleep because I was practicing how to draw robots, you know. <laughs> and, and I think that mentality, that kind of mentality, you know, serves you well. Yeah, you were not asking for it, but you were ready because, like, if you, you your artwork it. was shitty, then Ben would yeah. never recommend you to anyone. Like that's right. as simple as that, you know. And. You were just, uh, it just happened that you work with the right person at the right time and you had that quality that is needed in order to propel yourself even further, you know, and that's, that's usually what I, what I, what I tell my students too. And I did it on a couple of talks already too. It's like, if you're not getting phone calls and, you know, cause a lot of people are asking like, how do I find jobs? Like, do I have to go to this school or that school or where should I go? Right. Um, it's like it doesn't work that way. If your if your art is good, it, you will find that yeah. opportunity. You know, and sometimes but you, gotta be good, but you gotta be proactive too. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. But I mean, being proactive is not gonna help you if your work is shitty, obviously. Yeah, so. yeah. Your work being good is like a given. You know, it's like yeah, it's like a, asking asking a professional basketball player. Like, do you know how to play basketball? It's like a given thing. It's like the yeah. other thing that, that's going to make, you know, push you towards that, you know, goal. So. Exactly. Like, it just doesn't come itself. You have to really work for it. And if you're not, then the opportunity will never come, no matter how loud you're going to yell and, and say it's not fair. It's like, well, I guess it, it's not because it's, you know, you're hired by merit, not by paper. So, uh, yeah. And um, I want to come back to, I mean, we started the discussion, got, got uh, sidetracked. We were talking about references and whatnot. Uh, yeah. And I've mentioned uh, concept art. Because uh, I've mentioned concept art because I remember those times where, you know, uh, like especially concept art and then uh, Seijin forums where everyone was talking where there was this big taboo of references and sort of cheating and, you know, like using using tools to create art instead of, you know, being like purist almost in a way. I wonder what do you mean by tools? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, what, do you, what do you mean by tools? Like, let's put it this way so for instance right now when you work in film and it's it's like it's pretty much film concept art 101 it's like i have never worked on the project so far and i've worked already on a few where you wouldn't photo bash things right you would use photos and references to put things together really quickly because some concepts have to be done really quickly uh, but also just saves you a shit a lot of time 
for rendering yeah. something that otherwise right. you know it would take you forever like that's right. that's 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 like a predicament or like uh like a default that you have to face when you're working right. on film right i remember right. in like a couple of years ago it was a taboo like if you mm -hmm. would use photos right. like, oh you fucking cheater right. <laughs> what I, if you I had think, same experiences goes through that you know i think everyone goes through that phase of like is using like in school you want to be that genius artist where you're like you know bragging everyone that you don't use reference or lying about it and yeah. then like i think at the beginning of your career most people you know go through that but i think i think you know you you need to use reference because you know if we are designing a tank or a, a tv a car whatever you know you can't beat the you can't make a cool design out of like you can't compete with the cool the car designers or like whoever designed the tanks or whatever those guys spend three to five years designing a car a yeah. cell phone right it's already there you know you can't beat that you know you guys look at like things are already figured out for you you know in reference you know like they already figured out how you know aerodynamics work how you know you know things work you know, in relationship to, to the user's interface and all that stuff is already figured out. They figured it out already. You can't make it any better. So take that, you know, and, and, and run with that and make it twisted enough to make it your own and, and make it cool. You know, I think, I think you just got to know how to rightfully use the reference, you know, without right. straight copying. You know, yeah. um, there is a difference between using reference for reference versus just playing out fucking ripping <laughs> right right like uh, like you know like if like uh, if you if you're designing a sci-fi car and you put the car handle on the bottom of the like door or something you can't do shit like that you know thinking oh, i'm designing this out of you know the new new thing that no one has seen before because you know people have thought about it already for years and years and it didn't work so like you want to take things that are, are already planned out and and yeah. you know done for you and and whatever saves you the time because you only have you know a few weeks to a month most to come up with cool designs and and in order to do that you gotta you gotta utilize things that are already there for you and and you know what i have no shame in using reference you know i think you're kind of stupid if you don't and and if you're not getting that job or getting that call even as a professional there's guys that don't want to use reference like the older generation guys i've mm -hmm. seen some of those guys that and they're probably sitting home without a job because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you can't come up with things that are good until you see the things that are already cool you know exactly and, uh, and another thing is the requirement that directors have these days you know when you when you work for film they want to see it's it's becoming more and more uh, true that directors would want to see stuff that looks almost like a final shot in the film, you know? Yeah, yeah, like they want to. Yeah, yeah, that's so true, man. Yeah, it's like, becoming like an expectation. Like, hey, I really want to see how it's gonna end, like how it's gonna look on the screen. Right. Like, just right. basically jump from idea face but also do vfx and you know if it's if it's the final right. shot with actors yeah that's perfect <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think that's like you know why they pay you all that money they wanna you know i think you you know especially in movies your job is to visualize what the director thinks you know what yeah. he has in his head which he can like describe it to other people in the crew without your help so your job is to make your keyframe or your design look what towards like the what what the final product would could possibly look like, you know. And then by doing that, you're saving millions of dollars by not for by for them not just going at it and start building sets and figuring out that it's not the right look, you know. Yeah. You're, you're 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 actually you're like a you, you have to read minds. Your job is to figure out what the what the director wants, you know, and, and you're you're making a guide map for, for the rest of the crew to, to go to follow. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're yeah. you're basically like a map maker, you know. Um, yeah, and you, you have to realize like 
it's not just concept. It's like with ev even in video games, it's you're oh, yeah. not the center of the world. It's it's you're part yeah. of a bi right. big team. Like if you go and watch movie, there's so right. many credits and oh, yeah. concept it's, artists it's, and illustrators are somewhere, somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, you you're just part of the big machine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that's why you shouldn't be claiming to be like this artistic genius and, and get attached to your drawing. Yeah. Because it's just it's it's a small part of the whole, you know, scheme of things. You know. Yeah, you're there to help director with his vision basically, you know. Yeah. And if you yeah. approach it that way, it's it's gonna be a completely different experience for you and for the whole team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because like like when I go to work, of course, like as an artist, I want to do cool stuff. Like every time I go, my mentality is this illustration is going into my portfolios. I'm gonna show it to someone, and I'm gonna feel good about it. But at the same time, you're going there as as a as a as a as doing a job. You know, you want to make sure you get your job done. You know, and and, and get paid. You know, because. At the end of the day, there's more important things than art, you know. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't be stressed out about it, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we all kind of get sad about this thing called art, and 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 we go we go crazy about it for for a little bit of like at the beginning. I think everyone goes through that phase where this is like everything, you know. You want to be the best of the best, you know. Well, I mean, some people kind of continue with that and, and, you know, and run with it and, and become really successful at what they do. I mean, the, the best example of it would be um, uh, Vitaly, you know, Vitaly Bulgarov. And, you know, you pretty, you, I'm pretty sure you know. You guys work together on... Uh, yeah, we, 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 him, Fausto, and myself, we sat together with uh, Michael Bay on his office. We were yeah. trapped. <laughs> Trapped in Michael Bay's office <laughs> from the rest of the art department, and we're like sort of like turning out like like all these designs. We're there together for like a few months, just trapped, and, and we're like the art art slaves for a few months. <laughs> but he's a he's, he's an amazing guy, good guy, super yeah, talented, super guy. nice. I mean, we already had him uh, on our cafe, and he's just like the nicest person. You can yeah, imagine. Him and Fausto, actually. Like, there's a, yeah. th those are the two nicest, like, warm-hearted people I've ever right. met. Like, they always yeah. smile and always always happy about everything. And it's just like, yeah. But Vitaly is like, right. he's a machine. Guys are nice like, in the industry. You know, like, a lot of the guys are really cool, nice guys. Like, yeah. the guys that are successful are actually really good guys that, that to hang out with, too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, like you, man. We had a we had a blast when we were working on that one project that got canceled. Uh, oh yeah, uh, over at Warner Brothers, and uh, I think it was during the World Cup. Uh, right. In what, what was the where, where was the last World Cup? Was it Brazil or where? Where was it? I can't remember. It was, it was Brazil. They lost yeah. to uh, they lost like to Germany, right? Yeah, and I remember it was me, you, and Paul in that in that fucking room that had like this loudest no, was, air conditioning, and we were watching we were watching games or like uh -huh. having a yeah, speaker yeah. and like yeah. shouting and screaming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good times, man. Yeah, good times. I remember that. Yeah. It was yeah. fun times, dude. Let's jump into some questions. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, I like, just continue. I mean. Um, you wanted to say uh, okay. something? I, I interrupted you. No, no, no. I, I just was just remembering who was on that show. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Daniel, Daniel Simon. Simon was. Yeah, Daniel yeah. Simon was there. Uh, uh, Joe Hira was there, right? I think he was. Yeah, there. I think so. I think so. As a set designer. Right? Yeah, and Kevin. Shit, I gotta talk to Kevin. I haven't I haven't been talking to that guy for the longest uh, time. Uh, Kevin Ishoka. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Such a nice okay. dude. Yeah. He's it's one of bad. those. He's one of those super nice people too. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I had a blast working with him uh, uh, on Tron that before it was yeah. canceled. It was it was the best team. Him on the and second one, on the second Tron. Yeah, well the um, the, the 
No, yeah, the the one after Legacy. I I started okay. working on it right after Cap America, okay. right. uh, and then it got canceled. It, I actually got a phone call that is is being shut down from Paul when I was uh, on the way to the hospital <laughs> to get my my baby delivered. <laughs> you know All that right. Paul. And, you know you know that Paul, Paul and I we lived a block away. Yeah, We're yeah. Like, Paul told me like you you guys are neighbors now. Yeah, so, we only saw each other like for, like just twice though. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the the problem, right? Like yeah, it's like he's so close. Like, oh, he's other. so close. I gonna visit him one day. But yeah. then, like when you when when you know you guys are um like the opposite part of the town, it's usually like you see those friends more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I think you see the guys that you're working together a lot. Yeah. You know, when you're not the same show, it's kind of you know hard because everyone's busy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Anyways, let's jump into questions. Uh, okay. And there's quite a few, and then we'll go through them and, and wrap it up. So, uh, first one was: How should a freelance artist uh, tell to his her client how much uh, you're charging for a commission, trying not to sound demanding? Uh, how do you ask? Like how much? Yeah, so I, I'm guessing it. Uh, let's the way the way I would look at it is, uh, you know, there's. You, it's I guess it's like how much you should charge, or I guess. Uh, uh, that's this, that's this the person, bad, right? that's Chiva Carranza Carazon. Fuck, I probably butchered butchered your name, dude. Uh, but basically, it's you know whether you should ask client how much to charge or how much you're charging and tell them. Uh, without sounding too demanding, I, th I think I think like well, that's like a like depends on the artist, right? Yeah, like depends on, on where you are. But I think if you're starting out, uh, how much to charge is like I think as a as an artist starting out, you gotta charge at least thirty five an hour, you know? Yeah, and, and that's in I think you, U.S. U.S. dollars in the and, Benjamin and Franklin. Depends on where you are, of course. Yeah, and, and I think I think if you are experienced and 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 have a lot of experience, then you should be demanding, you know. And and if you're not, not you should ask what you want to have, you know. Whatever you're gonna be happy with, that's what you you should get. Yeah. And my thing with making deal is if you already got the call and they want to work with you. You know, push push as much as you can. You know, like I, I always say, like a deal is it's, it's a good deal if that person doesn't feel too good. You know, one of the guys <laughs> doesn't shouldn't feel good about it. You know, and hopefully it'll be the other guy because you at the end of the day, you know, you make a good deal. You really, if you get the right deal that you deserve, mm -hmm. you actually work harder. Because you're satisfied with the thing, and you're happy. If you're if you're getting something that you're not happy with, your work suffers, and and after you know a period of time, you'll be unhappy at what you're doing. Because, like I said before, it's a commercial art. You got to get paid for it to to feel happy with what you're doing. You know? Yeah, and so. you're working on something that you might like in the beginning, and then. Eventually, it's just gonna be another one of those another boring. I think every job that goes to that, you know, like yeah. it's only cool for the first three months, and then it's just yeah. a job, just another job. Exactly, know? I've learned that really quickly. It's just like, oh my yeah, god, I'm I'm job. on my dream project, and then like five weeks in, like, fuck, when this is gonna end? <laughs> I think there is such a thing as a dream like project. You know, I I used to go crazy about the Ninja Turtles because like, I used to love them. And I love Transformers too, but that just works out really quick, and it becomes a job. And it's all about the people that you work with. Yeah, like you gotta love the people that you work with, or else this is like hard. But the biggest thing is you gotta like your pay. You know, if you're getting paid the right amount that you're gonna be happy with, you can stick it around even even the budget when the job is yeah. kind of boring. But if you're not, you you're gonna be complaining about it. You know, like, uh, you don't want to be in that spot. It's just yeah, like, it's not productive and yeah. So it's okay to be spending sometimes, and yeah. and I think if you're starting out in in US, I think you should at least charge thirty to thirty five an hour. 
you know, at the beginning, and then, you know, you, you can charge as much as you want later on. You know, I think. I yeah. think the more you get, the better. The better it is. You know. If you yeah exactly if you don't know how much to charge like that's a good baseline especially when you you're starting. Um, you can ask like what is the budget you, you yeah. guys have for the project and because that's not re revealing how much you want to charge but it's also giving right. you a baseline and if they right. throw a number that you're happy with that you can go with uh, if they throw a number that is just you know offensive then just you know then maybe state what you would be happy with and then maybe the nego negotiation will keep going right. but don't throw yourself for like let's say you want to work on a project and uh, they, they will tell you like we only pay five bucks an hour you know and it's like fuck like that's that's like a really bad rate for me i i don't want to charge under 30 so you're gonna throw like my rate is 30 and they say no we can only, only go up till 10 like you should you should basically you know step away from that because yeah, you're, you're going to be better off because what's going to happen is I've noticed this and I've been working from as low as freaking $2 <laughs> an hour. That's where I started. <laughs> I was in, in potato land, Poland, uh, up to whatever I'm earning right now. And those numbers can go high. Um, those numbers are very high now. Yes. <laughs> I don't, I don't, they are high, but it's a lot of work that went into it. However, what I'm trying to say is like, uh, you, what I've noticed is like the shittier the client in terms of like how shitty they pay, the more demanding they are too, in terms yeah. of like not giving you any flexibility of, you know, what you can do, always asking for millions of changes. And if something goes wrong because they fuck up, they, they're blaming you. <laughs> It's just yeah, like one big misery. Correct, right? You're going to be better off just stepping away, saying saying to yourself, fuck it, and telling them politely to, to you know, politely decline and not, not saying fuck off, but, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, um, that's my rate and, you know, maybe, yeah, we'll, you maybe we can try it another time or something like that. the clients that don't give you any trouble at the beginning are the good clients. You know, they, yeah. they treat you better too. But usually they're the ones that, you know, wanna wanna haggle you with your rate are the ones that are always demanding and are, are always hard to work with. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you don't wanna you don't wanna deal with that. You wanna be as far away from that bullshit as you can. Because it's just like Optic. you're gonna be much better off if you if you literally just work on your own shit and uh -huh. just spend that time just getting better, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to say. Like, if you're not getting the rate you want and you're like, oh, this is the only job I can get and I have to take this, it means go work on your portfolio. Like, don't take the job. Yeah. It means you're not good enough yet. If you have to take those shitty-ass jobs that pay you nothing, it means you're not ready. You know, don't be like, oh, like, should I take this job? Like, even though it's paying very little, like... Do I have to like take this job? It, no, it just means you have to go back to your computer and work so your portfolio is ready. It just means you're not ready to get, you know, to yeah. be on the workforce. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just wait, wait for the right time and then, you know, jump on the opportunity when it comes. Again, like opportunity will come. You just have to be ready for it. So, yeah, that's a good, it's a good, good point. Uh, how do you manage to stay effective in your work? I find myself wasting too much time in 3D than the goal is when the goal is to produce 2D image. I guess it's like, you know, running into sort of like a rabbit hole of, especially with, you know, using tools and whatnot, or maybe going into, because you don't work in 3D, right? Personally. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess it would be similar to like, let's say you you want to really detail that part of a picture, and then you just get lost in details. Right. I I, I usually uh, I, I can't I can't stand working on something for too long, mm -hmm. and I just need to move very quickly. And and the other thing is, I never zoom in to my painting much. I I, I work gotcha. very zoomed out, so I, I'm just looking at the overall mood and feeling and like you know whatever you can't see because no one's going to zoom into your painting mm -hmm. when when 
when they're looking at it, they're gonna look at the overall image. So like I don't I don't really get concerned about small things too much. And and um, I think if you're if you're just doodling on, on, on things and, and, and not being able to move, I think it's just like you gotta it just means you're not doing your your painting isn't coming along too. Like you gotta move away from it, step away from it. It's actually sometimes faster to start over if it's not coming out. But you know, I think the the good thing is to like don't zoom in. You know, like look at the overall picture. You know, because because even when you print it or print it big, you know, no one's gonna look at that. If you can't see it zoomed out, it doesn't mean you can't. It just means no one's gonna see it. So. There's no need to concentrate on those little details. Yeah, it's it's very rare that you would have your supervisor, uh, whether it's the director or um, production designer, to go like really into depth of what you're painting. I've right. I've had a couple of jobs like that. Uh, it was mostly with the VFX guys, like or, or person that has a VFX background, but they would specifically be after details. You know, they would maybe care less about composition and maybe care less about lighting, but they would care specifically about the detail and and really would want to see you know like almost i want to zoom in 100 percent and still see everything um but that would be very rare like yeah. five two percent of work or even one percent of the work i've done so far so right. yeah if you if you get stuck in 3d and you're sort of like damn like i'm wasting time in 3d just uh just stop just stop where you are and then start painting um because there's like there's yeah because like you're gonna get maybe 70 percent there and then pushing another 10 20 percent might be triple the time you know if you're not proficient enough and maybe you're using the wrong tools you're gonna just be wasting time so there's always a 2d to 3d ratio sort of like you have to be aware of and and sometimes it's just better to fall back onto what you're really good at and then you know um I think you have to go through this. Like I yeah. think everyone goes through this phase where their workflow is very inefficient and they spend a lot of time in one thing and you just have to go through that phase and once you get through it, you you, you, you stop doing that. Because I went through the same thing. Like I would zoom in like hundred percent and get caught up in detail. Yeah. Like spend three hours and I zoom in and I don't even see what I did. <laughs> you know. I had that phase like early in my career. You know, I, I would get like stuck on things, and I think it, it's like a learning process. I think it's like the yeah. whole process of learning. You have to go through that, and it's just refining your work process. You know, part of it. You know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, what else is there? There's some stupid questions here too. No, you don't have to be brain dead, social justice warrior to be in the concept art. <laughs> that's a what, 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 that was a question you have to be a brain dead social justice warrior liberal <laughs> uh, to be a concept art okay. get into concept art no you don't have to nobody cares about your political views they only care about illustration concept based I don't know what kind of advice that would be hard to sp have to be more specific question I would, I would think um, well I, I can tell you one advice that will give to everyone uh and i'm pretty sure steve you can admit and 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 you know and and say the same thing don't be an asshole you know <laughs> don't work with your ego be a, be a nice person if you're nice and you listen to feedback and you are generally a, a good person you'll get along and when you get along you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be fine Would i think that's very very important I think very important to be a, a good a good person to work with. I yeah. think that's maybe forty percent of it. You know, like sometimes they they like you and you get hired because you're good. You know, of course your work gotta be good, but you're also a good person to work with. You know, I think that's very very yeah. important. If you're an asshole, nobody will want to work with you. Yeah, and 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 you can pretend not to be, but you know. You don't. You'll get like you'll get called out later on. You know. Yeah. They find out. Yeah, you get find out pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. Especially in film, it's such a small industry. 
it is it is super, super small. small everyone knows each other and if you know if someone is someone is just being an ass and it it really shows and and you know in, in film specifically in film there's just a lot of like you know you work with with sure. people that you worked before with and uh oftentimes what happens is production designer or director will ask for recommendations like hey um i need like two more illustrators do you know anyone that would be good here and you're like yeah i work with that guy he's pretty 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 cool you should check him out so and those guys because again like concept in film and games it's just a part of the system and you know they are not going to spend their entire energy on trying to get a little edge and find you know this this concept artist from art station is like he has a better style i better you know maybe try him like they don't want to get into that because like they might have a artist that is not necessarily the best in the industry but a director who already worked with an artist they they built a trust yeah and they know like fuck if something goes wrong i can call that guy and he's gonna be on point it's gonna be yeah. you know pulling that extra hours because you know i can i know i can trust him that thing is yeah. so difficult to build you know yeah and uh it's, there's it's gotta be a good person yeah you you have that experience for sure right i mean you've been I, I, film for longer than me that's that's so true but also like i want to talk about how i got my first job mm -hmm. uh, like i got my first job through this like back in back in my days, our center had this like portfolio re review days where um, for like three days or so straight, companies would come in mm -hmm. and review uh, people's portfolio. It was one of those things that no one really got hired, but they were just there. Right. And like I, I got lucky and I got hired through that. But the only reason why, like I asked my art director who hired me, uh, was that my portfolio from others weren't that good. Like it was still to them at the student level, you know, mm -hmm. I was good, but it wasn't like the next guy wasn't that good. Was, everyone was pretty good, but I had, you know, good personality. I was very energetic. I was willing to, you know, work with them. You know, I showed that in my, in my interview and that was like the biggest reason why they chose me, you know, over other people who were just there. You know, because that's what interviews are for, right? They want to see who you are and uh, how you are. And I think it's, like you said, like it's just very important to be a good person. And, and you know, especially like in films, like you said, it's just like such a tight-knitted community and, and everyone knows each other and, and word of mouth just travels really fast. So, yeah, you, know, you, you want to be a cool guy. Yeah, I remember when I spoke with uh, David Levy for the first time. He, because I, I like, I, I don't know how we got on this on the topic of reputation, but he told me like, trust me, if like if you would have a bad reputation in this industry, you, you would already know about that. Like, you would never even talk with people from film because nobody would want to talk with you. Right. Um, and that's so true. Like there's, you know, I don't, I didn't meet like specifically shitty people just yet in film. And that's maybe why, because of like, because <laughs> stories about some production yeah. designers. Yeah. There's some, there's some, <laughs> some, some yeah. ju juicy stories. There's some Hollywood <laughs> personas. Like, yeah. there's, there's I've heard some yeah. stories, but. There's some horror stories. Yeah. I think, but I, I'm sure every industry has that. Yeah. But those are like like uh, outliers, I would say. <laughs> Generally, most people are nice. At, at least, yeah. at least for for uh, for what it's worth, the people I worked with were pretty nice so far. So, uh -huh. right, you're lucky so far, then. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, these days it's it's sort of like weird because for uh, last year and a half, I've been pretty much working from home, so almost right. kind of like disconnected from the industry. So you don't have the interaction anymore yeah 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 but yeah. you know it is what it is i enjoy i enjoy it so far so um another question was let's see what was the another question uh do you guys ever procrastinate 
And if you do, how do you get yourself back to being focused on your work? Abs and in the, in the browser, you sort of like put your, uh, yourself in the mindset of solving problems and getting into work. And the longer you do it, the more deep you get into it. Um, but you have to just sort of like, sometimes you just have to force yourself to do it. And the, the removing distractions is, I would say, the biggest issue, you know, because it's like, it's so easy to like pick up a phone and like, let me quickly check, check uh -huh. Facebook and, you know, scroll because the, the dopamine, right? Like when you scroll Facebook and you see new news and so you see likes, it's just the dopamine. So Facebook's so fun. You can't get away from it. <laughs> But I think I think this is another one of those things that you know artists go through. I think I, I went through the same thing where it was hard to concentrate. Yeah. But then you know you get used to it, and then now if I just sit, I can just I could, I could be doing anything like in the middle of my dinner, and but I have to work. I would just sit in the computer and I can start working. It's just now like a habit. You know, if yeah. I sit in the computer, I I can start drawing. But I think it takes time to get used to that. And I think maybe trying it for, you know, a small amount of time, like just concentrate really hard on, on, on for like a few hours and then just do whatever you want to do again for, you know, an hour or something and then get back to it and concentrate for like, uh, you know, two hours or so. Yeah, you, you want to you wanna get into that mode of like just remove distractions and focus and focus and... Try to go through it as, as, as far as you can. And, uh, I, think, I think that's the hard part, the, trying to get rid of the distraction. You know, yeah, so. yeah, for sure. Like procrastination in general is, is difficult, you know. But I yeah. also think of, I would think about it this way. Like, hey, like think about maybe a, a reward uh, that you will get that's after, it, after finishing it. Like, let's say you have to finish this work and... Uh, because you have to like deadlines or whatever, whatever that would be. Right. Um, but then, you know, after you're done, you're going to have time for family. You're going to have time to go and hang out with friends, you know, that otherwise you would, because like, especially with freelance, if you're freelancing, yeah. you're going to be in the situation where you need to finish something because otherwise you're not going to get paid. It's not like working <laughs> in the studio where you can just sort of like semi fuck right. around and, and you'll get just, fired. Yeah, and then just like say, oh, I, you know, you know, you pick up a phone call and then just go for a meeting, pretend you're working, right. and sort of things get by. To a degree, obviously, not not like you can abuse it, but it's definitely easier to procrastinate when you're in a studio environment uh, than if you're, you know, working from home because then you, you have no excuse. Like, where's work? <laughs> oh, right. I was on the meeting. Meeting with whom? With your cat? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so like just think thinking about the reward hey like if i if i do this then you know then i'll have time for that because otherwise it's just the scattered time and you know if you're um if you're any any kind of distraction is, is going to remove you from the thinking process that might be developing the idea further and making the the, the painting process or creation process much easier when you're focused versus like when you're scattered like wait what was thinking oh shit there's like this new news about trump and there's the new cat video and fucking the new episode of breaking bad or whatever that is you know and you're just like distracted all the time and wait what i was painting and it's just like it's really really easy to to forget some of the the flows that you might be otherwise building when you're painting so uh let's just get one more question guys and uh I'll let you go, dude, because I know you're busy. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. There's one more question here. I have the opportunity to master to do master's project developing uh, a educational a mobile game, and I would be uh, completely paid for, or and it would be completely paid for, or. I could try to be a prop artist in the video, in games industry. Should I get a master's? So I guess the guy is asking for an advice, like do uh, educa educational mobile game versus uh, becoming like a prop artist for for 
you know, maybe a triple A AAA project or a bigger yeah. studio? I think, I think experience is better than any education, you know. But it seems that it would be. Is he gonna develop a game? It's a project, yeah. Okay. It's like a, it's like a, a game, mobile game, but it's educational mobile game. You know, it's like one of those games so, where, that you learn. It's his master's degree to get to work on that game. Is that is that what he's saying? Yeah, do master's project developing educational mobile game. I guess it's like a, a, a master's project. It's like for. But uh, it's like a graduation uh, project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would, I would go work, man. I would yeah. go work. Like, I mean, it depends. Like, if it's a fun yeah. project, then then by all means do it. Um, but if you if if you you know if you look at the other project, like that that video game, uh, if it's something that would give you, uh, like. If it's something that it has like a good profile that would you get a lot of experience from, that's gonna be more important than any any title you're gonna have from your school. Nobody cares about what are your masters or you know doctor doctorate or whatever the PhD fuck like PhD. PhD. Yeah, nobody gives a <laughs> shit about that in in you know in games. It could be and an film. Or drop out and, and be a good artist. Exactly, you could be janitor with no. Yeah. Like me, with no fucking uh, experience in whatsoever, and then start getting experience, and that's how you build your career. You don't need a degree to do that. So, just judge judge it by the opportunity of what kind of project this is. Like, if it's a if it's a really cool, fun project that you're gonna have a blast working on, and as a side benefit, you're gonna have masters that nobody cares about. And yeah, by all means, do it. But um, the only thing that I would say having a degree would help you with is if you if you're not a U.S. citizen and you want to work in the United States, they're definitely gonna help you. But otherwise, uh, you know, if the other project that that video game project where you would be a prop artist uh, has better profile, in, in meaning like it's a bigger client, it's a better team, more talented people that already work in the industry, or maybe like a really cool art director or something like that. Uh, I would go with that because that's going to give you already sort of the entry to the games industry. And if you're going to be, you know, pushing yourself to become better and better in that field, eventually you'll step up and, and work on something bigger. You know, that's how it's, it started for me. I, you know, I got offered to work for People Who Can Fly and I was doing like shitty work. Uh, but it was still the team that I was, I was with, with uh, that helped me, you know. To get better and, and and work on more high profile stuff, and it was same to you, right? Uh, I mean, you worked with Ben on that animation uh, in that animation studio. I always forget the name of it. Fuck, I'm so bad. Yeah, yeah but that gave you an opportunity to you know to jump further. So yeah, yeah, I would say I would say yeah, that's the right route. Cool, dude. Uh, dude, time is flying. We've we've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes or so so yeah sorry for holding you up for, for too long <laughs> i know it's past my bedtime now <laughs> oh, <shit>. yeah <laughs> uh, get some milk the warm milk and uh, go to bed <laughs> all right dude it was really nice to catch up with you we should we should actually yeah. you know get for coffee or dinner or something I soon because i haven't seen your beautiful face for a long while now <laughs> yeah, it's, been, it's been a while i can't believe how, how the time long. is flying it's been uh, almost yeah. two years dude almost two years I can't it's been that flying. wow yeah it's been... that's, that's but, but we've been talking a lot we've been chatting a lot yeah it's, yeah it's just like that's it's not in person yeah, it's face to face is more important, you know. Yeah. I started to realize that the more the more I'm, the more al adult I am, and the more I'm yeah. in this in this world, and you know, uh, it's it's fun to catch up with people on Facebook. But when you talk face to face, it's a different quality of conversation. So, dude, true. thanks for being here, and uh, I I, I regret you. we haven't had a chance to talk about everything, but you know, maybe next time. So. Yeah. yeah, let's wrap it up, guys. Thanks for everyone who joined us today uh, and and watched us live. If you're watching it later uh, as not a stream, then thanks for watching the whole thing. <laughs> Obviously, 
if you like what you see here just press that subscribe button obviously you know your subscription helps we also have a patreon it's in the description if you want to help the show and uh, help me to get more guests and you know dedicate more time towards doing this just do that I'll, I'll keep doing it anyways but obviously the more time i can take away from work the better for this so guys thanks a lot and um next week i'm gonna have nick jindra uh and then some more cool guests line up so thanks again steve and uh guys take thanks, care Martin. thank you guys all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.